We are too old. Wow. <laughs> I was just cracked. <laughs> Let's try that one again. So, welcome to the Northern Nets Podcast. This is episode 121, and we are two sisters in fiber coming to you from the Canadian prairies in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Uh, once again, enjoying Jocelyn's central air yeah. on this 33 degree heat with the humidity high forecasted so for today. So it is humid. so sticky outside, you guys. Uh, I am Jocelyn. My co host is Diana. And theoretically, we're going to spend the next way longer than we should talking to you guys about knitting and fiber and all of the fun stuff in between. <laughs> Diana, yeah. do you want to let know, everybody know what we're going to try to cover this week? I've got, uh, what's in our cup? You know what, I'm going to look forward while I read this. What? Oh, yeah, oh, I know, man. crazy stuff. I don't know. What's in our cup, woolly workings, fiber flubs, yarn on the go, wool gathering, and literature, and events. Woohoo! What's in our cup is super short this week. <laughs> it's hot outside, and the kettle's on the fritz, so we're drinking water, because hydration is key. I'm pretty sure I've, I've given myself heat stroke again, <laughs> which we do personally at least three or four times a summer. And you guys, I'm notoriously sticky for not going outside. I am a Nazi about it for the most part. I was outside yesterday and I knew better and I rested anyway and I'm paying for it. So nothing but water, all the water. I could make coffee. I have a Keurig machine with K-Pods. I don't need to be caffeinated and feel like this. I feel like that's a bad option. No, yeah, that's, that's, that's unnecessary. I feel awful today. Oh my god. I slept till, oh what, 12.30? Was when I sent you that first text? That's, yeah, I was that's still, I was, was still in bed when I texted you. And said I was awake, sort of. That's really late for you. Or she tells you how bad I feel. Wow. Because I generally don't stay in bed unless I feel awful. So, if I seem less energetic today, uh, for people who have listened to us uh, or watched us before, there that's why. I'm just I'm still overly warm. Uh, if you're a new watcher or listener, I'm usually louder, a little more gregarious in my motions. <laughs> today we're going to be a little more reserved. Diana will have to be the super excited, happy, enthusiastic one today. Oh, that's not happening. I also <laughs> did not drink enough water in the heat yesterday. So it was, I'm, uh, I mean, it wasn't too well. bad. It was like 30 yesterday. No, like it felt good. I just, I realized sometime after dinner that I had not had enough water and that mm -hmm. was a problem. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Most of us were sort of paying for it. I mean, the gazebo knitting in the shade was wonderful. I just, I know better to stay out in that much heat without any wind. Mm. So I, I did it to myself. I'm an adult. Why is my foot lickable? There's a cat for anyone who's wondering why we have very weird random statements. There's there's a cat that thinks it's time to play and not time to record. Her tongue is scratchy. Ah, tickles. You're the worst cat ever. You're not. I'm just being overly dramatic. Okay, that's it. Mom had to move her foot. Listen. Last thing I need is like a raw spot from your tongue, ma'am. I clean myself fine. <laughs> Evidently you don't. <sighs> you need grooming. If you guys want to see Phaedra, who's my cat, you will see her pop up on the Instagram that we have a lot of the times. Because uh, we're the Northern Knits podcast on Instagram. We're on brand. <laughs> we really are. <laughs> Yep. Uh, she pops in there every once in a while because I'll be trying to do something and then she'll be like, no, nah, it's cat time. I'm like, great. Oh, I forgot a project. <laughs> oh no, you're going to make me change the show notes after we've already started? Uh, yeah, I'm also going to have to do a cut because <laughs> it's by the computer. Uh, shh. I don't mean to. <laughs> it just occurred to me now when I was saying cat causing me trouble because she's been helping with that project heavily. Right. Yo, it's great. All right. Ignore me. We're drinking water because we are super, super high class fancy people. Whatever. Water's tasty. It I is. I have no problems with it. I'm, of course, drinking it out of my giant Christmas mug. <laughs> because what else do you drink water out of in the middle of the summer but a giant Christmas, Christmas mug? Week? This makes complete sense to me. I feel like Louise from Fiber Friends would totally get me <laughs> and be really behind my giant all year round Christmas mug. I don't know. I don't know. 
Well, it says, I'm... sorry, Santa. Naughty just feels so nice. I'm very skeptical of this Christmas mug in July usage. It's got a cute little Christmas tree on it. It looks like a gnome hat. Mm, I'm skeptical, but I mean, you can do what you like in your own home. It holds like two cups worth of tea. If you need to increase your water intake, this just seems like the way to go. Cause you don't like, you're, you don't drink it and think, oh man, I had two cups of tea. You drink it and you think I had a big cup of tea. This is my second for the day, so given the hydration issues. It's a good way to trick myself into more water, isn't it? Fair enough. Cat. <laughs> <sighs> All right. What have you been working on this week? What haven't I been working on this week? Yes, as usual, you have way more stuff than I do. <sighs> hey, all of my grant applications for university are in, so I don't have any more massive amounts of- ah! <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about yourself. Literally just get startled by a cactus. It's a plushie. It's a blue plushie. You may have scared the cat who wouldn't have understood why you went like that. Uh, that was wonderful. I thought like something had gone. No. Okay. Like Phaedra jumped up over the corner and her paws had startled you or something? No. No, it was her cat toy on a stick. Um, <laughs> It's just suddenly there was this <laughs> thing in your room yeah. flying at me. That's fair. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's just it's just a fuzzy blue cat toy on an elastic. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. We're good. We're good? It's You're so okay? Good. <laughs> I think it's a good thing we don't have coffee in here today. Oh my goodness. Oh. Uh, uh. Crazy lady. Uh, too many levels of scaring for what that was. I wasn't quite prepared for you to jump that high. Oh my goodness. But neither was I. Oh, okay. Ah, we're good. We're good? Oh. All right. Um, in your order to go, I'm going to talk about how I went to the beach. <clears throat> and I talked about it in last week's episode. Guys, I went to the beach. Spoiler alert. Um, I wanted to have something that wasn't at a large size, so it was heavy and on my lap, which sort of makes the idea of taking the mallow card again, or like the twin it up shawl, because mm. I don't need a lap sized baby alpaca shawl in my lap. Yeah. That would be bad. Yeah. So I took one fingering weight project with me and I, need, I wanted to have a worsted weight project in case I was having problems focusing because of the light. So I cat recast it on, you guys, the drama of the my first sweater. Uh, this was an MCAL that was hosted by Marley Bird and Red Heart Yarns earlier this year. And I made the sweater uh, in the size with all the positive ease recommended for it for my size. Put it on when I had the front and the back done and hated it. And went, okay, well, let's do at least one sleeve and make sure that it's just, I'm having problems visualizing it because I don't have a sleeve on yet. So it just looked like a super baggy sweater vest. I didn't look good at all. So I'm like, okay, maybe the, sleeve will, <laughs> maybe the sleeve will help, right? Sleeve didn't help. So I had a three quarters done sweater that I ripped Ooh. all the way back to the beginning. Oof. It just hurts. Just hurts. So I recast it on in a smaller size. Um, and I did it in the round because I'm, I'm obviously no longer participating in the, in the knit along because that's well and done and over. So I've modified it to knit it in the round. So I'm going to go up in the round 50 billion inches. Uh, it feels like. I have literally done the ribbing at the bottom. It calls for three inches of ribbing. I only did two because I thought the three, I think three inches is too much, but that's a personal aesthetic thing for me. So I am working in some faucet jewel toned uh, yarns from Loops and Threads. So it's going to make a wonderful fall sweater. And it's in beautiful shades of, um, I'm gonna go with like a golden wheat color or antique gold into a jade green so it does do some striping and stuff i haven't decided if i will split for the shoulders uh, because it is striped or if i will steak the shoulders so that i can keep the striping pattern on the body mm. so but as i've got 20 they said they the pattern calls for like 18 inches from the underarm down but I'm more comfortable if my sweaters hang a bit longer and because this is acrylic, I'm not going to get a, a bunch of, like, I'm not going to get a ton of stretch out of it. So I'm going to knit for 20 inches to 22 inches. 
so that the sweater hangs lower. And I'm at four. So <laughs> you got a bit. I got at least 14 inches before I have to worry about it. So I'm not going to stress it for now. I'm just going to go around and around. Uh, now that uh, it's been on, I will, uh, once we're done recording, I'll put a progress keeper in here. So as I work on it, I can track the progress. Otherwise, I start to become uh, disheartened because I can't track the progress. It just looks like it's never growing. Just I never, you. never fun. Are you having the same problem with some of your larger projects? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially if it's all in like a similar color, like self self striping sock yarn is like that helps. I'll just go to the next, next stripe. stripe. Oh, just the next, next stripe. stripe. Just like, yeah. But yeah. when you've got big blocks of color, it's like oh. this is never going to be over. For, yeah, yeah. And you but, know you're making progress. You just can't see it, so it's hard to stay motivated. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, do that and stick the stick a progress keeper on here. So I'll have to pick a progress keeper out and do that. It's not it's not going to be a problem. Maybe it'll be an ice cream because Diana made me some ice creams. Uh, maybe it'll be a snowflake. I don't know. We'll see. So that's what I'm working on. Uh, none of my yarn is caked. It's all bald because I literally ripped the sweater. Out. And I wasn't going. I wasn't going to recake the yarn. That seemed excessive. So it's the loops and threads. It's the jewel tone. It has got a heck of a fuzz on it, like a heck of a fuzz. So it is really nice to knit with. Like given how much fuzz I've got going on, it's like almost a mohair fuzz. Hmm. for halo effect that you're getting on it but I've still got some pretty good stitch definition going on but you can definitely it looks like a fuzzy sweater because of that uh, halo effect I've got going on so I suppose I have to keep going don't I probably okay. oh, I got a crumb down my girls boobs we're just gonna say it guys most of us are girls here, even if we're not, you know what? We all have them. This is true. And mine got crumbs from my bannock before we recorded. And now it's itchy. <laughs> I am a giant child. Oh man, am I in the middle of the row again? Why? Always in the middle of a row. Are you guys tired of hearing me talk about my Northern Radiance shawl yet? <laughs> in case anyone thought designing was oh. easy. It's not bad the first time around because you just sort of like whip through it. You're like, yeah, this is great. And then you realize I really should do one more just to double check everything. Because while math says you're correct, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. Mm -hmm. It's not soup. Design is math, but math isn't always design. So I'm making it for what is now the fourth time for me. So Oof. I'm tired of making the shawl now. I love it. I'm excited by it. I just don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm over it. Uh, I am doing my last copy of the no <coughs> goodness Northern Radiance shawl in two colors of 100% Pima cotton from Creek Garden Crafts, which is Penny uh, in the colorways Hibiscus and Hibiscus Flowers, which if these are not summer colors, I do not know what are summer colors because it is this beautiful Hibiscus pink. If you guys are um, not entirely sure, Google hibiscus flowers. This is pretty, yeah, it's, it's what a hibiscus flower looks like. And the hibiscus flower, which is the variegated colorway, is white with uh, speckles of the uh, pink, some green, and some blue for representations of sky, leaves, and the colors of the flower themselves. So it is looking great. I am super happy. I liked the pattern, obviously, enough to send it out to test vendors and to get it published, right? Which is what I'm working towards. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean I want to, you know, super continue what I'm working on. I'm literally got, I'm going to sit here and hold this up and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm working on like what, my ninth row of lace. I know Should how to count. So? One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm working on my, either my ninth or tenth row of lace. So I literally have like three or two repeats left. I am so close. ridiculously close. The only problem is when you settle in to do a row at full sized crescent, like like the size I've got it at now, the row takes 15 to 20 minutes to knit. Uh, so I do half a row, I put it down and I play on my phone or I do half a row and I put it down and I read something and then I or get up and do dishes. Or 
just fine. It's what you got to do with this size of shawl row. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We all do. If you've done big shawls, you know the problem. But I have a, a small handful of cake left in the Pima cotton, which is a fingering weight in this, in this case, which should be enough to do my last chunk of repeats. So I either have technically six rows or like four rows left since a repeat is two rows. So I should have more than enough to do what I want to do for my finishing of my bind off, which means yay, my math worked. Yay, math. And I love double checking math with different types of yarn because the yardages vary. So it's, I love me a solid math and I've got very little left of my hibiscus, which is the, my first color, which is my pink, which is the pattern section. So I got a little nugget left of that. It's so cute. It's tiny. It looks delicious. I wouldn't eat it. <laughs> Just because I'm not sure anybody needs to eat cotton. Yeah, Probably might, not. might have a few chemicals in there that aren't so hot. <laughs> it might, given that it's not, you know, cotton white. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 been, probably, it's probably got a few things in there I should not eat. It's processed. <laughs> <laughs> that, and I mean, we're not really supposed to eat cotton in the first place. We really aren't. Uh, it lives in a Christmas present project bag from um, Sunflower and Storm Clouds, which is uh, Chantel's Instagram handle. So Miss C managed project bags, and then she enjoyed the process so much that she's now making her own bags and has a Shopify store and everything, you guys. She donated a prize for the Across the Prairies cow. I have dangerously stuck my feet under my coffee table. They might get attacked. Listen, we have snacks for the cat in case she becomes a bit of a nuisance. Shall I jump in with one of mine? Uh, yeah, because then I can sneak off camera and get the project off by the computer. <laughs> Whoopsies. All right, well, go sneak then. I'm stealthing silently. Very silently. Listen, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse has taught me anything. If you say sneak while you're doing it, it's fine. Right, then everybody knows that you're sneaking and that they can't see you. Bingo. Shall I wait for you to finish sneaking? No, no, go for it. Okay. I am still working diligently on the Find Your Fade. It's a huge shawl. It really is. It's, it's getting there. I am solidly into my one, two, three, fourth color. Oh my. Yeah, those um, will be some long rows. Yeah, it stopped growing now. It stopped growing a while ago. Mm -hmm. They're long rows. The color that I'm in right now, which is this brown with oranges and a tiny bit of purple that doesn't really show up on camera, is Truffle from Hedgehog Fibers. It shows I, up in person. <laughs> I got it while I was in Dublin on an eight hour layover. Yeah, it's the Dublin yarn. Yeah. Because this is my travel shawl and I've got the London yarn and the home yarn and the Sorry, this one's the London yarn, and then this one's the San Francisco yarn. And then I still have to do the San Jose yarn, and then I need about 20 more grams of yarn to finish off the edge. So Could I... you use your first color? I don't think I have enough of it. I think what I'm going to do I is... I don't have a scale, so I don't know. I do have a scale. I could figure it out, but I'm uh... pretty sure I don't. I think I only have about 10 grams of the... <coughs> oh, dear. Because that would have been left. perfect. Yeah, it would have been, but... Uh... I also have an old project that I made that I used most of this for. Mm, that you don't like? I, I don't really, so I might actually unravel it. Cause, so the, the end of this is either it's either going to be the San Francisco yarn again. Because I think that would be a great callback. It would. So Especially might... if you don't like the project that the San Francisco yarn's in yeah. right now. That's not too I just... bad. I mean, disappointing because yeah. frogging something, I, that I get. But I might as well put the yarn in something that I'm actually going to wear, and I'm yeah. far more likely to use this. Yeah. Uh, so it'll either be that, or I have my hand spun that's Ooh, also orangey colors. Right. So we'll see. Nice. We shall see. Okay. I'll decide when I get there. Like me and my sweater? <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, that's a very good way of going about it. Don't worry about it till you get close enough that you actually have to make a choice. I got oh man, it. you made some significant progress too. Ooh. It's more right progress, not as much as last time. Last time was crazy for you. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I I worked on something else this week, so I didn't make quite as much exclusive progress. You mean you made a smaller amount of progress and you had more than one project on the go? I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
I still make progress. I just not as overwhelming as other things. I'm increasingly excited for wearing this. I almost feel like it's. it's I love wearing mine. Don't get me wrong. It's a massive shawl, and I love wearing mine. I enjoy it so much. I contemplate making another. That's an undertaking. And it, I think it was the only project I worked on one month when I was out visiting my mom, which is the only reason I got it done so fast. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you blasted through that in like a month. Yeah, well, I literally would have days where mom and me couldn't go outside because of the air quality and the heat. So uh... I, both of us were stuck indoors. So I would spend eight plus hours sitting on a couch That's chatting with my mom, done. just knitting. I think I also, yeah, I dropped a stitch and had to pick up a stitch all by myself in the lace section. Ooh. Whew. It's a good thing my mom has some mighty powerful reading lamps. Because <laughs> I was under there right up by the light and my mom, I was like, don't even breathe at me right now. <laughs> That's an intense focus. <laughs> don't, don't, don't even look at me. <laughs> I don't, I don't exist. All right. I'm so excited for that to be done. I'm going to love it come this fall. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Oh I don't know what happened exactly, but my, my one edge where the where you stop increasing, it's like a little bit bubbly and I I don't know what I did right here. I just there's All just, right. Odd. I, it'll blow it'll, well, block, it'll out. block out. It's yeah. very slight, but I just I don't know what I did there. <laughs> but it's just it's got a small You've just bump. gone off the deep end. I I guess. You I don't know. rabble rouser. Ugh. How dare you. I probably just forgot to do the decreases the way I was supposed to. That's totally fair. All right, so you guys may or may not know, I am a huge fan of Cozy Up Knits. Diana's with me. We adore the girls. Um, they are one of the uh, four podcasters that we do the Across the Prairies Cal with every year. And I saw Jamie earlier this year. I'm going to cough again. <coughs> Goodness, I'm sorry for people with earbuds. Uh, she had done a pair of DK socks. And she was raving about how fast DK socks knit up. Um, and in my brain, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. It's a thicker yarn. You're using a bigger needle to get the gauge that you want for sock gauge. Like, yeah, yeah, it would knit up quicker. Guys, it knits up stupid fast. That sock didn't exist yesterday. I have a toe and three quarters of a foot. You just boom, sock. Boom, sock. Now, admittedly, I literally worked on this when I got home between uh, light nappings and trying to cool my body temperature down um, on and off till about 2.30 this morning. Because I came home, I literally did the app, like I did farmer bear minimum. I put the things that needed to go in the fridge in the fridge, fed the cat, put my pajamas on, started cooling myself off and climbed into bed. That was at 8. <laughs> we, I, we left shortly after you. <laughs> yeah, so I was I was done in bed by like eight thirty nine o'clock, and I napped on and off and drank water and just have felt awful since. But I got a lot of this done because I was like, well, I need something that's ridiculously easy to just drop, and if I drop a stitch, I won't cry. So it's definitely not my larger projects because it would upset me to have to tink back or start all over again. I would be really mad. So I went with the uh, Kramer yarns that I had received to do a review of in their tatami sure i don't know how that word is it's pronounced. a tatami tweed i went i got some uh faded denim and i used uh three skeins of this bad boy to make the endless summer shawl which is actually out to test it is right now look at how efficient i'm being with some stuff you guys but i have some leftover skeins i was like so i want to make some more stuff because i have to do the review in august so i'm making a pair of simple quick vanilla um cotton socks to wear in the house nice so super excited but i'm i'm within a fingers fingers width so like half an inch to an inch of my heel which is crazy i cast it on the toe yesterday because i literally just needed something i could work on in bed while i was three quarters kind of awake you know that awake where you're you're awake but you're not awake, really which not really awake and you're like i could be productive but i'm not being productive so yep. I have found a way to be productive in that time frame, which makes me feel better about the amount of time I've spent in bed. Or we'll be spending in bed the next day or two, I suspect. Uh, so there you go. I've now turned it inside out because when I knit socks, I knit them and they come off the needles inside out. 
Never figured out why I did that, but that's how my socks work. Literally worked. knit inside out and backwards. I do literally knit inside out and backwards, which is hilarious when you think about it because I crochet uh, left-handed. Fine. <laughs> I, don't get it. I have no problems <laughs> using right-handed instructions to crochet left-handed and it turns out in the exact same process as everybody else. Well, I mean, I'm left-handed, so I'm going the wrong way around the work, but the stitches work out just the same. So I can help people with crochet questions, but I can't help them with knitting questions because my knitting is just usually that far off compared to other people. It's kind of crazy. I know it doesn't make any sense to me either. Am I still going? I've got a thing if you uh, want to not talk about a thing. I'd... Uh, we'll do this one and then we'll try it out. Okay. All right. Ready for some Barocco Vintage DK, you guys? Let's have it. I, this hasn't even been actively worked on for over two months yet. If you think about it. You just, you started that like a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll be done in and around the month marker. Wow. Oh, I know I was thinking about it looking at my post the other day and I went, wait a minute. So you ever going to finish that Zadie sweater? The like, first sweater that you started? <laughs> you mean the sweater that's sitting in its sweater basket over there on the couch? Yeah, that one. That one right yeah, there? that one right there. That needs a sleeve? Yeah. Yeah. You ever going to finish it? Yeah. <laughs> it's in my stack. Okay, between recordings on my coffee table, I have my project stack that I want to finish for Stash Dash and the Zadie sweaters in that stack. Because really, guys, it's been on the needles for like two years. Yeah, it's gotta Should be... just finish it. It's and one I of your am, oldest ones. It is one of my oldest ones. And that one and the starting point wrap. Yeah. Those are my, my oldest two whips. And I'm just like, really? Just get it done. This is ridiculous. Finally, I've got some sweater mojo. So maybe this summer? I've still got like a little over a month. Yeah. I've managed some pretty impressive things in a month. We'll see how I go. Uh, the only reason I didn't do the Zadie sweater out and about is because it's three quarters of a sweater sitting in your lap. Yeah. Which probably didn't help with my heat yesterday that I was working on this and it was in my lap. I was working on my Mallow cardigan, you guys. <laughs> this is a Barocco pattern. It is a wonderful pattern. You can either do it as a pullover and it's called the Marsh or you can do it as a cardigan, which is called the Mallow. So uh, they were they ran a wonderful Marsh Mallow knit along. Hey. <laughs> I liked the word play. Uh, so I picked up, uh, in, uh, May, just before my grandmother passed away, literally the day before I was buying yarn at Prairie Lily Knitting and Needlework, uh, in uh, Saskatoon, which is a delightful local yarn store in Saskatoon. And I grabbed some blue. It was a color debate. My dad and my mom and me, we spent a good 15 minutes figuring out what color I was going to make it out of. Mom said no more white sweaters only have 12 I don't know what she's talking about uh, so we picked a beautiful blue there is no color name for Barocco stuff so I've gone with sort of like your blue genie yeah kind of color or that sort of midsummer color you could confuse it for um, a medium lake blue or like a medium sky blue yeah I'll go with that yeah or like that not quite faded denim color that favorite pair of jeans color. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's a solid blue, which makes it sound so boring. But it's really pretty. I like, I don't, I don't have a problem. Periwinkle. Periwinkle. Nice. Call back to a color. All right. So, it is sewn together. It has a collar. I'm working on my first sleeve. Look, look, there's a sleeve growing out of this thing. It's a real sweater. It's a real sweater, you guys. The sleeves are done in the round, so I had to figure out where I wanted that little seam I got from Magic Loop. And I decided to just have it match the seams for the sweater, mm. where, I sewed, where I sewed the sweater together. So it is a lace work back. Oops, let's rotate this. So my lace is done. It's blocked. The lace chart panel turned out great. It was my first time working with a lace chart, which was if you've watched previous episodes, my dad blew up the chart for me to a ridiculous size and it was delightful and man, did it make that process easier. The fronts were knit flat and everything was done in pieces and then you seamed it and you started your collar first. Now, this is not the collar that the pattern comes with. 
I did the full collar pattern, which is two inches of knitting, again in a DK, so it's a couple of hours, nothing big, right? And I put it on and I decided I didn't like the look of it on me. When I got the sweater, I was super excited about the collar because I was like, oh, that collar looks amazing. I don't like it on me. So I have literally done this collar twice this week because I ripped it all out, repicked up the stitches and just did a solid garter stitch collar. You're thinking, well, is that crazy? Yeah, it's probably crazy. But I have a little garter stitch bump going on the bottom of my sweater. So it matches that, which is good because some things I like to have match. I have 50 million ends. None of them are woven in. I don't care. <laughs> and I like uh, how it looks with the garter row edging instead. Just on me. I think it looks great with the sort of lacy open hole look. I just, I, mean, I didn't like it. So I wasn't too hard. Fin literally finished and bound off during Knit Club Meetup yesterday. So I cast it on the sleeve and picked up the stitches this morning. So when I say I've cast it on the sleeve, because I've done two rows. Two rows. It counts. It counts. On the bright side, because this is a drop shoulder construction, I'm really only making sleeves an inch and a half above my elbow and down. And even though I have long arms, that's still a really short sleeve. So, so it's basically done is what you're saying. I'm at the point now where if I'm not careful, I'll get distracted by other projects and never finish it. So if we're taking bets, we are at the beyond three quarters. It's so close, Justin. Why won't you just put the four hours in and get it finished part? The same with the Northern Radiance shawl. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I might have two finished objects next week. Oh my goodness. That would be crazy. And uh, and uh, what did they call it when you have half a sock done? A hoe? That's a great sleepy time project, that sock. So um, it might just live beside my bed and I'll keep working on it when I'm partially conscious. Sounds good. You seem to be doing fine so far. There's no pattern. It's just knitting in the round. Your turn. Oh. I only have one more to go after this. This is so heavy, right? I don't know. Is this just heavy? It might be. Yeah, it is just this. Huh. Okay. Well, today I learned that uh, cotton and linen is uh, kind of dense and a little bit heavier than you might otherwise expect. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. So I have here one of my oldest whips. <laughs> might actually be my oldest whip. Ooh, mine is definitely, I think, the starting point. Uh, it, it is the Celtic Myths fingering weight version. It is a crescent-shaped shawl that is stockinette except for this lovely cably border. And when I started this shawl... Oh dear goodness. We weren't podcasting. It was, I started it shortly before I moved out of my parents' house, so... That makes it at least four years old. Oh yeah, hey. So this is at least four years old. Thank heavens, my oldest project's only like two. Oh, anyway. I'm feeling very vindicated over here now, thank you. <laughs> so uh, when I had started that, I was not the knitter that I am today, and I had to concentrate so hard on doing these lovely, beautiful cables. Now I can do these lovely, beautiful cables and read charts and whatever, and even drop down and fix cables while carrying on conversations. So it's uh, it's gonna get done this year eventually. I made a little bit of progress on it at Knit Club yesterday. Just this, this lovely border here. <sighs> it's getting there. It's slow work to do there. an it's... applied border on a cro on a crescent shawl. I know. Yeah, it's two I've rows of uh, two rows of border eats up one row of body, mm -hmm. and I still have all a this. lot of body to go. I still have a lot of body to go. I'm over halfway, just. What What I about think. my feet sticking out and consuming all the space means no, cat wait. climb over? I can see this. I can see the seam here. You can see the seam. I don't know. I don't know. I'm somewhere getting close to halfway. I think. You were going to be so excited when you're close to the edge. You'll be like, I, I can do it! <laughs> it's so, 
<laughs> so close to being done. I still oh. absolutely love this project and I really, really want to wear it because it's going to look amazing. And I want to finish it before summer's over because this is a perfect summer shawl because it's linen and cotton. It really is. It is Juniper Moon Farm Zoe base, which is 60% cotton and 40% linen. <coughs> it's really freaking nice yarn. Yeah. The cotton really helps to soften up the linen, but even, even as you're knitting it, the linen softens up. And I'm so excited to wash it and oh. see what it does. It's going to be so buttery soft. And it's, it's this lovely neutral, grayish, brownish neutral color that's going to go with absolutely everything. You have a mostly neutral wardrobe, so yeah. 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 I'm excited for you to be done so you can wear it. I think Me you will really too. enjoy it. Just, just, and you'll have another project done, which is your goal for the year. Hello. Oh, hi, cat. Oh, hey, cat. <laughs> hi. And suddenly there was a cat. And stop for pets, because I am demanding like that. She, yes, and you have quite the little paws. My goodness. She really does. She's got a lot of her weight on her back ones, which are on my leg. <laughs> oh, it. Oh. Oh my god, why are we all on my knee? Why are we completely on I don't my... know. She thinks she's smaller than she is. Oh, did she move us out of frame again? No, we're okay. We're good? If the camera's shaking, it's because the cat's helping. <sighs> That's one way of phrasing it. If I gave you some snacks, would you go away? No, she'd be demanding more snacks. Uh, yeah, and then sometimes no. Yes. You know what that package is. All right. Maybe Auntie Diana loves you enough to feed you snacks while I talk about my last project. Okay. Maybe. Maybe she doesn't. Maybe she does. In my Halloween bag from So Into Knitting when I got at the Manitoba Fiber Festival last year, because Halloween, you guys, I'm working on my Across the Prairies cow. Oh, this is the doing? summer long cow that we're running with four other podcasters. On We're doing any Stephen West pattern. And I am doing the doodler. Now, the doodler is a crescent-shaped shawl. You think I'd learn my lesson given what I currently have on my needles. The answer to that is no, I have not. So I have cast it on and done two wedges. That's a lot, hey? <laughs> Stephen West makes massive shawls. I have this tiny, itty bitty little thing. It looks so good. <laughs> I'm making great progress. Yeah. <laughs> I'm until the end of September and you haven't even cast it on. I'm doing fine. Yeah. So I am doing it... And I am using a gray from Midnight Cravings called Smoke and Mirrors, a orange from Undercover Otter, which is one of the European yarns that Diana brought me home while she was out in the Amsterdam in Hackleen, which is a sort of a yellowy jack-o'-lantern colorway. I certainly did the first row of lace completely wrong, and I'm not going to notice when it's finished, so I'm not taking back. And then I did the second row of the like eyelet lace hole sections to delineate the uh, wedges correctly. I'll be doing them correctly the rest of the way. She has her snacks now. She's happy. Yeah. Now, the fub about this one, and with like the collar, where I had to rip out the whole collar, is I started with the wrong collar. Oh no. I wasn't paying attention. I started with the orange, got the first little wedge done, which is an I-cord cast on, by the way. Mofo, I was so mad at myself. Got all the way out and I went, wait a minute. I wanted the wedges in gray and the sort of fingering stripes in orange, not the other way around. Son of a water buffalo. So ripped that out and started all over again. So I'm currently working two colors coherently at the same time. So here are my ginormous cakes. I re-caked my uh, orange one because it was really tight. <laughs> And it looked ridiculous. <laughs> and then uh, the edge, which has got a sort of added border, is going to be in this witchy business colorway from, uh, again, Undercover Otter. So it'll be my Halloween shawl. This is going to be my Halloween shawl. It obviously has to live in my Halloween bag. Well, clearly. Clearly. Where so, else could it live? Um, well, on me, theoretically, when it's done. So I have till the end of September to get this done to enter three other podcasts for prizes. I won a prize last year. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that to happen. I just know we said we could enter each other's draws because the fun part about hosting a knit along is hosting the knit along. The unfun part is you can't enter for prizes. So I never finish on time, so I can never enter for prizes anyway. I don't win very often. 
So I'm always like, sure, why not? What's the worst that can happen? I don't win. I still have a thing. I'm done knitting when I'm finished. Really? Phaedra. <sighs> what are you doing? Just playing with the knitting needle. The metal knitting needle in the metal bowl that makes a lot of noise while we're recording. Mm -hmm. Stop it. I swears. You were extra cat today. Is there a reason for this, drama queen? Some weeks, all she does is sleep over record. Some weeks, we're active. Today, we are inactive. So, um, I cast it on, but because it lives by my computer for when I'm um, literally waiting for things to process, usually editing. <laughs> And I'll do some edits and I'll be like, oh, or I'm exporting. I'm like, hmm, I've started exporting. Well, I've got like two hours. Let's work on something complicated while I wait for this process to finish. So I think that's be when I'll be working on this one. So, Because then I can just have something playing in the background and just work on it while I'm watching things slowly and incrementally tink up towards completion. It only took four hours to export and upload last week. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. That's my life, guys. There you go. Ah. I don't have a sewing machine right now. I don't know what to tell you. And I got mad at the spinning. That's fair. We'll talk yeah. about that next week. Probably. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I'm still trying to do the tour de fleece, but I knew I was going to hit some learning roadblocks because it's a heck of a learning curve. It's a, unshockingly, I've hit a roadblock. I've downgraded my tour de fleece goals from uh, spin every day because that hasn't happened mm. to uh, by the end of it, I would like to have the yarn wound all of the yarn off of my bobbins so that they're empty for a new project. Sure. I still like I'm practicing my treadling at least for 15 minutes every day. So I'm still using my spinning wheel 15 minutes every day. That counts. Yeah. So I'm still technically getting better at what I'm doing. I just need to get over my current roadblock. Because learning is fun. Brings us to Yarn on the Go. Uh, we did Knit Club this week. There's yeah. actually a photo on our Instagrams. Uh, lots of hearts and thanks to Jen for taking the photo for us. She brought yeah. cheesecake. It's uh, fantastic. It smelled and looked great. Um, we were sitting out in uh, Miss Terry's backyard because she has an amazing backyard. And we enjoyed some shade uh, and some knitting. And things like spinach dip in bread and bannock and spinach tea bread. and spinach there was bread. so much food. So much food. So much food. Which was perfect. You always want to have more food than not enough food at a potluck. Yeah. So it worked out great. So that was wonderful. Um, Thursday I had gone to Birds Hill Park with Missy and Terry. Uh, we can tell you how in the loop we are. I listen to the radio every morning. I knew Folk Fest was happening. I knew it started Thursday. We were all very shocked when we got to Birds Hill Park and there was a lineup because people were driving into park to camp to set up for Folk Fest on Thursday. And we're like, right. It happens every year. <laughs> I yeah. don't know why it took us by surprise. Same time every year. They make a big deal they out make of a, it. And there's advertising six months in advance. Like, oh yeah. It's all over the news. A lot of a lot of the year. I'm like, oh man, we're observant today. <laughs> uh -huh. So we went to West Beach. There was so much space for everybody. We weren't crowded. It wasn't overpopulated. We didn't have too many people. It was a beautiful day at the beach. Excellent. There was a super strong heavy breeze, which helped me out a lot because then I was able to stay cooler a bit better. You had to hang on to everything because if it wasn't tacked down, it was going places. Like we were using my cane as a weight on the end of one of the blankets. <laughs> Otherwise the blanket wouldn't stay down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that like, is annoying. Whoopsies. But it was a fun day. And it's only like 20 minutes from the city. So it's really super close. So we went out and we had lunch and we swam and we spent a lot of time chatting and we did, we all did a little bit of work. None of us did a lot of work. I actually knit more in the car to and from than I actually did while I was there. Um, well, yes. So, there's that. The beach is for lounging. Well, it was hard because we had to be in the shade. Mm. Yeah, so I was just... So that we didn't get too hot or there wasn't too much sun going on or anything like that. So then we were on the grass, which is a little bit harder. So either the sand, if we can get a spot in the sand in the shade next time, or a picnic table worth taking. Good plan. Yeah, there were picnic tables, we just didn't take one. 
So there's that. So that'll be happening then. I don't know. Did you do any yarn on the go other than knit club this week? No. Just knit club. That's fair. You work for a living. I do. I mean, I do, but... I work in an office for a living. Yeah. It's a very different sort of environment. Yeah. You do get to sit out and work in the afternoons on the picnic tables. I do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Picnic tables, as it turns out, are not terribly ergonomic. <laughs> With the whole no back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you know that? <laughs> Almost like they weren't designed for it. It's almost oh, like they weren't geez. designed for you to sit at them for like hours at a time. Typing on a computer? Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? Right? Oh, jeez. But I do appreciate that whenever I so feel like it, I can just pour myself a beer from the keg and go sit on the patio and do my work. Yeah. And this is fine. I don't think I'm really going to take any of your complaints about how you have to work super, super seriously. I have, you have no, a pretty sweet job. I have job. no complaints. You have I have a pretty no real sweet complaints. Job. Yeah. Yeah. All of my complaints okay. are very fabricated. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I couldn't go to the beach. You Instead, had to... I had to sit on the patio with a beer. Yeah. Oh, it blows me. Such hardship. Uh, Such I, hardship. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Uh, sorry if the girls ever feel bad I'll be like hang on we'll text her she'll make sure to grab a beer from the cafeteria <laughs> and then go back to sitting on, <laughs> on the picnic bench yeah. in the back <laughs> had a lemon drop lager this week it was pretty good cool anyway uh, wool gathering uh, Jocelyn went shopping yeah listen our local yarn store does a big summer sale it's a summer sidewalk sale and it helps them clear out some of their yarns and their and their leftover bits before they get the big fall shipments, right? So it makes sense to me. I love it because they have a huge, huge, two, two huge tables of 50% off stuff. And usually day, first day it starts, they don't have enough space. So you, there's like stuff on the back table in the store that is also covered in 50% off stuff. So much stuff. I think at the hour... In a half we spent shopping, at least an hour of it was outside looking through because it's literally shoved in baskets and bins and stuff. So, Oh, stacked on the floor, stacked on the table, stacked everywhere. Jocelyn bought a big old bag. It's a very impressive bag. This is not even $120 of yarn. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a mistake. Uh, uh, that was a mistake? Uh, I was trying to knit things that should not be knitted. Uh-oh. Okay. Which included fiber. I haven't even successfully spun on my spinning wheel. Fiber yet. But I'm buying more. This is... I don't have a problem at all. No. Just... Now, having said here. that, quickly brown bag, which is what Phaedra's after, because I'll clip the handles off and then I'll let her play with the brown bag when we're done here. I got some Manos de Uruguay fiber. Merino so top. Bright. It is an amazing shade of yellowy white into green. Cat. She was jumping up to get into the second level of the stairs. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So it's merino tops. Now she's jumping down. Or is she getting in? <laughs> Disaster number two I for the day. I think she went into some kind of cupboard. She got into the cupboard? I think so. You little <laughs> not nice word for the internet. Ah, jeez. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> fine. An eventful day. <sighs> I have some computer wires that live in one of my basement windowsills. She startled herself. I got a war-torn zone all over my computer desk. Stuffies flew everywhere. There were wires all over the place. Cat freaked out. Table turned over. Lamp went sideways. I was just like, what I had done was walked out of the kitchen with my bannock. <laughs> and that's when the chain reaction got set off. It's like, okay, it's gonna be one of those days. Okay, okay. It's one of those days. What is she? Oh, jeez. Uh, I don't know if this comes with a colorway name, does it? Agua. Yeah, that's a good enough name for it. This reminds me of sun dappled forests, just without any brown. Yeah. For the trees. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. Or that sort of um, algae green you get in lakes. Also that. <laughs> so that's, a, that's a less appetizing color. Less appetizing color or association. Nonetheless, still true. <laughs> so I got both of these guys at 50% off, hence why I bought two of them. I have 
I don't have any intentions of like pulling them apart and spinning them right away. I got a lot of fiber prepped, but this is so pretty. And it's gonna look so nice. Mm -hmm. My hope is once I've gotten through the stuff I want to do, it's sort of like that um, sport DK worsted kind of range. That when I get to this, I'm practicing fingering okay. spinning. Because that would be super cool if I could spin this into a fingering weight. Yeah. That would look really nice. So, as has goals, you guys. As has goals. Will I get there? I don't know. We'll find out. My cat's killing me. All right. I was on the lookout for my Auntie Chrissy. She saw my mom's blue Jamie shawl, which I had given to my mom. She really, really, really liked it. My mom guarded the shawl with her life because mom wasn't giving it up. So I guess I'm making my Auntie Chrissy a shawl. <laughs> sure, that's fine. I don't mind. <laughs> so I found some Sidar Snuggly. Yep. It's pattern cake. Guys, it's an acrylic nylon blend. It's super soft. I like it. It is really soft and it is 545 yards. Approximately. It's 150 grams. And it goes and it, it's got a wonderful color rotation from like white into glacier blues into deeper glacier blues into like the deepest glacier. You get the idea. It goes from white to a nice shade of blue. I almost bought two, but I feel like a 300 gram fingering weight shawl is kind of big given the size of the, the Jamie shawl. So I'm not sure if I decide it needs to be bigger, if I want to do it thicker, then I'll do that. But um, there's some lovely uh, shawl shapes. And Andy Chrissy was specific. She wanted the blues and she wanted a tassel. <laughs> Blue tassels. And she liked the shape of the Jamie shawl, which is a triangle shawl. So I need to make a triangle shaped tasseled shawl. Okay. <laughs> Not, it's not gonna be hard, guys. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, that doesn't really narrow down any options. Cool. <laughs> oh, let's do another Jamie shawl. Not a problem. Uh, the Jamie's at a worsted, so if I do that, I'll have to go back and get a second ball of right, this, right, right. so I can hold it double, which I might do. I got, I got options. So I'm gonna take a look and see what I like and what I don't like, and I'll start by making some tassels. Once I've decided what I'm gonna do, and then I'll go ahead and make the shawl. So I'm excited about that. And this is my first time working in this yarn. It's a really nice yarn. I paid regular price minus 20% because the first weekend is 20% off regular priced items. Most of them. So I even got the regular priced yarn on sale. Nice. The inner sales couponing person in me is very excited. All right. Now for the reason I actually went. <laughs> right. Yes. The actual reason. Because, of course, you always need an actual reason when you go to the iron store during their weekend sidewalk sale. I didn't know it was going to be a sidewalk sale. I was just going to go on Friday, which is the day after the beach day. When Terry informed me that the sidewalk sale started on Saturday, I went, well, let's go Saturday morning instead. Fair. Because <coughs> I thought, hey, sweet, I'll be able to get sock yarn at 20% off. And the Fiber Friends are doing an impromptu happy birthday to Caroline self-striping sock -along. Okay. And they've given us three months to make a pair of self-striping socks. Well, that's easy. I'm like, that's an achievable goal for Jocelyn. And I don't actually, until yesterday, <laughs> have any socks on the needles. And I haven't for a bit. Not since I finished my Halloween socks. Mm -hmm. Minus the heel. So I was like, okay. Well, I can't count knitting a heel. That's not going to work. <laughs> totally counts. Um, I so I was going to go pick up some sock yarn. So I picked up some comfort sock and woolen color sock yarn. Guys, I picked up some pretty German self-striping sock yarn. And I picked one skein up in these beautiful shades of grays to white. It just reminds me of newsprint. Well, maybe slightly greener than newsprint, but yeah. Okay, it's fair. I can give you the green tones. So I'm going to, this ones I'm going to cast on right away because these ones I'm quite excited for. And then this one just reminds me of an old 70s Chesterfield, one of my aunts used to own. <laughs> so I like, I felt like this had to come home and I'm sure they have names. I'm sure I can't read them. I looked for names. I don't know names. I didn't see any. Excellent. So this one is done in, and I'm going to go with 70s, 80s shades of brown with the stripe of orange. 
because that's what I see. <laughs> I'd say I'd say more like dark gray and red, but sure, that would be dark gray. Yeah. See, I almost registered as brown. The red is definitely orangey. It's a lighter red, but yeah. I would I would solidly classify it as red still. Yeah. Anyway, still, it's not pumpkin orange. No, no, no. But it's not a blue red. It's definitely a yellow, a yellow orange red. Yeah. The darker color? I don't know. I'm always guessing on those. But yeah, I know it reminds me of a Chesterfield I once, one of my family members once had. I could see that. So uh, I'm going to cast these on later because I don't need two sets of socks on needles at the same time. I just need one and I really want to make it out of this. And rather than, I think it was like oh, 14 something, it was $7 a ball. Nice. So really. Also, only having one set of socks on the needles at a time and like not needing two pairs of socks, that's that's heresy. Well, I make socks two at a time. So every time I'm done, I'm done a pair of socks. Yeah, but you could have, you could have both going. I only have one 2.5 millimeter needle. So 2.5? 2.25? Another needle. Yeah. I don't know. Dad's bringing home pineapple drizzle and other spicy drizzles. He's bringing home the chocolate spicy drizzle for us to have on ice cream. That sounds delicious. I'm also highly addicted to my Chowgu red lace knitting needles for my socks. So, you know, that's a thing. I'm not done, guys. I got one more thing to go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Come here. I picked up three skeins of fingering to make a TK crop top out of. Do the math on that one. I'm going to make, among the many podcasts I watch, one of them is called the Chelsea Pearls podcast. And those wonderful ladies made, they make crop sweaters, which I'm torn on cropped sweaters about because I don't, as we've discovered with the, my first sweater, I don't do well with super boxy looking shaped things. They need to have structure. So things like the Soldatna crop, I know won't look good on me because it'll just cut me off at the widest part of my body. But I could lengthen it and it would look like a nice A-line sweater, which would look good on me. Uh, they made one crop top called the My Boy Lollipop. And that looks really good. And it's designed to be worn with negative ease. What was I saying at makeup the other day? I either have to be big all the way top to bottom or just have an overly large amount of boob. And it just looks better if I have an overly large amount of boob. It, it does. Well, like the boxy ones, they go to the widest point of view and then they just drape straight down, right? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, that just makes me look very, very big. <laughs> There's a lot of difference between the girls and my rib cage measurements, you know? Yeah. 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 I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So the My Boy Lollipop one, because I'm all legs, will look great because it'll be a fitted crop top that I can wear with my dark leggings, my knee-high boots, and my tank tops, which will just be bottom third of me is brown, the middle third of me is black, the top third of me is color. Okay. So that'll look good because that breaks me into threes. Or two-thirds of me are black and a third of me is color, which breaks me again into thirds, which looks good on my frame. So I found three of this Zen Yarn Garden in the uh, National Parks. Is it National Parks? No. National Gallery of Ireland Colorway. And it is double the amount of yardage I would need at the DK weight. So good to make it because I needed 600 and something and I have over 1200 in fingering. So okay. I could literally hold the fingering double and make it. Okay. And it'd be fun. Which, let's be honest, is probably what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cast on the My Boy Lollipop probably after Stash Dash. Because I've got those projects I want to get done this year. And then this will be really good for me to practice the sweater skill set. So Increases bits. Taking bets that this gets casted on before the end of Stash Dash. I need to free up four millimeter needles. I don't actually have any free ones right now. And I need to buy the pattern and finish my mom's crocheted car cardigan that I haven't even started yet. So still taking bets <laughs> that uh, this gets started in You're the next couple of weeks. saying I have an impulse control problem? Maybe. I said nothing of the sort. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I hear the judgment coming from you. That's fine. 
I never complete projects because I'm always starting things. You never complete projects because you keep working on them slowly. Yep. We have the same problem, just different formats for it. That's all. I bought more stuff. My stash is nice and healthy again. I really didn't need the fiber, but you know what? I don't feel bad about it. Yeah. If I'd had, I'd been paying enough attention and I remembered the summer sale was coming, I would have put more money aside and I could have picked up sweater quantities for $50 or $60 a pop. Ooh. I was definitely not on the ball this year for that. That's my fault. My bad. My bad. <laughs> I should I should have been paying more attention. Yeah. Then I could have walked out with a ginormous bag. <laughs> People would have thought I was crazy. It was hilarious. I'm looking and I'm pulling up skeins of yarn and all I hear is, Jocelyn, do you want a basket? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. At least we're not pretending. <laughs> And we get up to the front cash and everybody's been giving her giving their names and the, 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 the there. And she's like, okay, Johnson, I've got you. And it's Douglas, right? Oh dear. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's me. Oh boy. <laughs> they know you at the local yarn store, is what you're saying? It's almost like I go there fairly often and I'm on the internet. <laughs> Who knew you guys? Who knew? No, 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 no. I got the stitch in the lace. Ah! Don't do that. I required a very strong light and people not to look at me or breathe in my direction. I got it. I caught it before it ran. Good. It's okay. Good. I did not. <laughs> Ooh, we're, was, good. we're good. We're so good. So how about some uh, literature? You want to talk about some books? Yeah. You can talk now. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> what did I write down? Oh, I've, uh, I finished a book. Okay. I was listening to, oh, what's the title of it? The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Did you enjoy it? I did. I So I put this one on hold at the library, like, way back when I was reading the other one. That was which, a while ago. Yeah, that was quite a while ago. It's a popular book. It was on, I had it on hold for, like, 22 weeks or something ridiculous. It's only 52 weeks in a year. I know. It's a lot of weeks. This is a lot of weeks. Um, so I finally listened to that, and it was lovely. But I like her other book better for if you actually want to know how to tidy up, the uh, the other one is better. Yes. It actually gives you instructions and diagrams and whatnot. But this one is very motivational in you clean up this stuff and this is like why I do it the way that I do it. And Did so. it motivate you to clean stuff? Uh, I haven't actually got around to cleaning anything, but I am very motivated. Got it. Yeah. So it's all theoretical right now. We yeah. have no practical applications for it yet. I I did actually, when I read the other book, I cleaned out my entire closet and I organized it. So it's rising to the right. And I started folding all my stuff in the little rectangles. Sweet. I love folding the stuff in the little rectangles. My closet looks so good. I know. It's you just amazing. Open, you my open your drawer. Beautiful. You open up your drawer and everything is just all yeah. nice, clean lines. And you're like, oh, that's really satisfying. <laughs> It is weirdly satisfying. And if it's just like laundry takes you extra time because you're folding, it's yeah. fine. But I just, oh yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm slowly making my way into color blocking my closet. So I've got it by what type of clothing it is. And now I'm working them into color blocking them. So it just has this nice, nice look. My walk-in closet's pretty much on display too. You have to get through, you have to go into the walk-in closet to get to the bathroom. Mm. It's like everybody sees my closet. If you come over, you see my closet. I still haven't Yikes. tackled my socks. That's a big project. Uh, yes. So I have an entire large sock drawer. Not because I'm a crazy person that stockpiles socks. You are. Uh, not on purpose, <laughs> honestly. What happened was when I was 16, <laughs> I told everybody that I wanted fun socks and candy. Got and it. boy, did people deliver. Do you and still get fun socks and candy? Uh, yes. Perfect. Listen, as an this adult, there's nothing more exciting. Years. I have been... Nothing more exciting than receiving fun People have been giving me fun socks for 12 years. I don't buy socks. Would you like us to buy you boring socks? No. And and Stop buying fruit? me socks. I don't need any more socks. Why are you telling me? I don't buy you socks. <laughs> I, I buy you yarn. Uh, with which to make socks. That's, I have no control over what you choose to make with the yarn. That's not how it goes <laughs> in my brain. My brain goes, oh, that's a Diana purple. And it comes home with me. <laughs> that's Fair. what my brain does. Yes. I generally don't even look at the fiber content anymore. <laughs> so I'm out shopping. I'm like, oh, that feels nice. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So. 
What do you think is going to happen at Ipsy if you're not there? This is a Diana color. Tara will be like, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> Diana can figure it out when she opens it up at Christmas. Read that, please. <laughs> I'm motivated to clean things, so I... Wonderful. Recommend reading the books. There is something very satisfying about having a cleaning schedule and a clean space that is just... It's also very nice if you nice. Ha if you travel a lot and you have to, like, pack stuff all oh, the time. Oh, God, yeah, it can be so much easier to pack things. Yeah, because you can just go, I want these things, and you just, like, grab a clump and you stick it in your suitcase, and it comes out of your suitcase pretty much pristine. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, no, that worked really well. So Super good. Oh, it's so exciting. But, yeah, it does take, like twice as long to fold everything. I know because I my, my mom liked my closet and drawers so much I had to do it to hers and my father's. <laughs> that was four hours I spent folding clothes for my mom. Oh dear. A lot of folding. You must be pro at it now. Really? Well, I did, she wanted me to show her uh, when you do the t-shirt fold because you start by making it folding and tucking the sleeves in, right? Yeah. So she has you lie it down. I did it backwards. I reorganized my closet, and then I watched the Netflix thing, and then I read the book. That's completely backwards. Not the way to do that, guys. Do it the other way around. It makes more sense. I went back to folding things the way I used to when I worked in clothing retail. <laughs> so I don't lie things down on the bed to fold the sleeves in. When you fold stitches t-shirt tables or gap t-shirt tables and you guys have all seen the t-shirt tables where they're stacked six colors wide two colors deep this high right yeah somebody folds those three or four times a day Ugh. and again at the end of the night somebody's being paid to fold all of those shirts and they're folded by hand it's not done by a machine you do that often enough <laughs> you get really good you get at really it really good at it for some reason <laughs> Almost like it's a practice thing. You know that annoying word adults always tell you when you become an adult, you realize, yeah, that's just really the trick to everything is practice. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> just practice. Just works for so many things. So when I fold it, I literally just fold it in the air and then tuck it up into the thirds and put it down. So I had to slow down. <laughs> so I had to show my mom. So I'm standing here just whipping through my dad's shirts, right? My mom's like, I can't do that. I'm like, what? You don't have hundreds of hours of t-shirt folding under your belt? <laughs> <laughs> to the point where you see an unfolded t-shirt a decade after you've left clothing retail and you're still compelled to fix it. <laughs> and you have to remind yourself, you don't work there anymore. You don't work in that field anymore. You do not have to fold the unfolded t-shirt on the table. Have you seen me try to do that and stop myself? Yeah. 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 It's a habit. <laughs> like I could have worse habits, but that's fine. But yeah, so it's, I, I don't find it adds too much time for my folding routine, but you'll get to that point where you're like, ha, ah, yeah, push, push, done. I'm already like way faster at it. It's more like when I come across something that I had folded or had folded incorrectly the first time, it was mm. like, oh, I did this wrong. Okay. Now how do I fold this better? Yeah. yeah. Like my pajama t-shirts are oh, massive okay. and they don't. They require an extra fold somewhere, and I haven't quite figured yeah, out where. where. Okay. Well, I'm, then my next step is to get one of those little uh, spacer grid things that you can put in drawers, so you can roll up your socks and stamp them. So no, I haven't your drawer. figured out what I'm going to actually do with my socks yet. I don't have that many socks. I have, like, a comfortable adult number of socks. I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of socks, but I'm still going to have more than the average person's you know what you number could of do socks. Is you could turn a bunch of those socks into dice bags could but i don't have that many dice and we've seen how often i sew for you for other people <laughs> we've seen how often i sew i can't help you with that you have more than one functioning sewing machine uh i think i gave the other one back that's fair so i still have the, yeah i still have one perfectly functional yearly new sewing machine i have no functioning sewing machine right now anyway bah what have you been reading this week i finished two books this week uh, I listened to the Song of Achilles and Circe, which are both by Madeline Miller. Yes, I think that's what we, what we figured out. Yeah, um, different there. points of view. So the Song of Achilles is told from the view of Patroclus, and Circe is obviously the story of Circe, who is the daughter of Helios uh, and a nymph. So she is a titan. Hmm. So I 
super love these myth retellings. Madeline does an amazing job. She does such a good job that I started Circe, which is a 10 hour plus book, it's like 10 hours and change, right? And stayed up to finish it the same day. Like that's all I listened to all day. Wow. And I rarely nosedive that hardcore into a book these days when I'm listening to it. Like I get distracted. There's other things I need to do or I want to listen to my music for a while or I want to watch like a Stargate episode on TV or, you know, there's YouTube. Like I am behind on YouTube podcasts this week because <laughs> that, that, that Cersei book. Wow. Because then I was like, oh, I really enjoy it. So then I went back and listened to the, the Song of Achilles. I just, I enjoy how she tells stories. She just adds a bit of a twist to it. Like what is it from the other person's perspective? Hmm. Ah, so it's I also enjoy just really heartfelt stories with really good characters. So, also happen to have a, an ancient history degree. So, so it sounds like all of the good things ticks all of Jocelyn's boxes. Super happy, loved the book. In case you can't tell from all the current raving I'm doing about it, uh, and I literally it it was the first book that caught my eye by Madeline. Uh, and I liked it because of the cover. <laughs> right. And I and I initially picked it up because of the cover. Didn't read the back of it. Had no idea what it was I was reading. I just thought the cover looked cool. So I bought the book. Fair. I do it a lot. I did it with the orange Pyre of the Orange Tree. Yeah. Worked out. It's work works out a good chunk of the time in my favor. It really does. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Because then I don't have any expectations. I just go in to have a good story and I get a good story. Whether or not it's what I'm expecting is entirely a whole other can of worms. Who knew? All right, that was it. I just I just did those two books this week. I mean, it's like such a small thing. I just did two books this week. It's a lot oh, of reading. Too. It's a lot of reading, guys. I do acknowledge this. I don't have cable. Eh, cable's not worth it. It's really not. A lot of internet I skipped on. I did watch the Crochet Crowd, crowd Week 1, a study in textures, or uh, the Earth one that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I am definitely doing that over the winter. It's a seven-week crochet along. I'm not doing it right now, which is when they're running it. But I am going to, I'm definitely doing it this fall, this fall or winter. Nice. It did look nice. Oh, I'm so excited. But I just, 30 plus degree heat from now till what? End of September, likely. Uh, it could be. Yeah, I'm not. Mm -mm. I'm not feeling the blanket. Fair. Not Fair. feeling the blanket. I can do a sweater. Definitely not feeling the blanket right now. We'll do the blankets later, guys. I can't. I can't right now. Totally. It's fair. too hot. And crochet grows so fast. I'm just like, mm. it's not good. All right. That's it. Uh, what do we have left? I think it's just events, is it? Just events. Uh, okay, so in case we haven't talked your ears off yet, let's see how quickly we can run through this. Jocelyn has randomly joined a new knit along. Not okay. a shock. It's the self-striping sock along being hosted by the Fiber Friends, who are a wonderful trio of ladies out in Ontario. Then, in case you didn't know what I was going to be making, it's a pair of self-striping socks. It's I like socks. I like self-striping socks. This works well for me. And I have three months to make them. I might actually be able to do that. <laughs> okay. I was like, no, that's a goal I think I could achieve. And if I don't, whatever. When I'm done, I'll have a pair of self-striping socks. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. We have Stash Dash currently going on right now, which mm -hmm. will run till the 24th of August, which is a month and change away because we are really close now. About a month and a half. Yeah. Uh, That's going to fly real fast. Must knit faster. Must knit more. Uh, that is hosted by the Knit Girls, and it's a yearly summer long challenge of yourself to complete and finish things in your stash. So uh, I enjoy doing it every year because I love the challenge, and I really tend to thrive on deadline knitting. Don't know why. I rarely meet the deadlines, but it sort of helps focus me. So. I do it. Uh, Diana likes setting realistic goals and actually achieving them. In fact. Crazy, but it's how we work. <laughs> so that's fine. And because the only person we're competing with is ourself. Both approaches are totally fine. Both work great. 
Uh, the uh, knitting bingo challenge for the year continues. I marked off a few more boxes this past month. I'm hoping to knock off a few more. Uh, that is something where it's the design your own crazy for the year. So hopefully you guys are working your way through your bingo challenge cards as well too. Don't forget to uh, tag us so we can see those on the Instagrams. I, I enjoy watching people check off their boxes. I make a big old X through mine. I'm like, I've accomplished you. Uh, uh, done. <laughs> It's really satisfying. It's posted on my wall in my walk-in closet. It's just like mine on my wall. It's sitting just on my desk right now. Oh, it's so nice when I walk past it and I'm like, oh, I want to get that square done. I just want to work on that square's project, you know? It's really nice. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I'm looking forward to the Complete the Spinning Project box. Complete the Spinning Project. And I get to put a big old X through a box. It's nice. So that's happening. What else we got going on right now? Oh my gosh. Oh, Across the Prairies is going on right now. Mm -hmm. We're hosting that with three other amazing podcasters. The Feather Stitches podcast, the Cozy Up Knits podcast, and A Tale of Two Knitters. So two of us in Manitoba, two of us in Alberta, and each of us are knitting whatever Stephen West pattern floats your boat. Yep. <laughs> or, you know, not yet. Haven't started, as in my case. I don't know. I haven't seen the Feather Stitches podcast yet, so I don't know where everybody else is sitting. <laughs> we might have other people who haven't started yet. I don't know. You guys have got time. You've got till the end of September. There are always amazing prizes, and you get to enter four draws on Goodbye. Ravelry Threads. So this is a super awesome sort of button long to jump in on. So if you guys want to share this with friends, let them know. You do have to enter on Ravelry, so you do need to be a member of our Ravelry group to enter, but the chatter thread is up. I do check it once a week, and I am replying and commenting on things. So I am seeing the colors in the projects, and I am loving people's choices. There are some stunning pieces of work that should show up in the FO threads here in the next month or two, and I am pumped. <laughs> so pumped. I'll probably open up the finished thread uh, next month. Because we are welcoming whips, though, as a general rule, we tend to sort of just ask if it could be 50% or less. So that way you are sort of working along like the rest of us are. And it's not like, I had two rows till I bind off. Here's a texture time show. <laughs> that seems a little unfair. <laughs> Maybe a little. Just a smidge. But yeah, so we're doing that. Uh, we tend to, everybody draws their own individual prizes. And... I think last year, Penny from Creek Garden Crafts sent all of us prize yarn. So, like, that was amazing. This year, our first full complete prize is in. Uh, depending on how many people we've got going in there, I may open up and go looking for a second prize. We'll see. Sounds good. Yeah. So, we've got a skein of yarn from my stash because it matched the bag so well. How could I not? From Sew Into Knitting. If you've seen the Instagram photo, like, it is yeah it they were meant to be together yeah. and a beautiful bag from sunflower and storm clouds which is uh Miss Chantel. so we'll see if i can get enough interest drummed up in the chatter and in the fo thread and we get enough people i will hunt down a second prize pack for people so that's the thing i think that's it we've got the little britain pop-up fiber festival happening on the 27th this month yep we have our patreon exclusive electronic knit in this coming Saturday mm -hmm. at noon our time, which is Central Canadian Savings. Central Daylight Time. Daylight Savings Time. Daylight yep. Time? Daylight Time, yeah, because it automatically updates. CDT. CDT. You guys have to be Patreon members to do that. Uh, if you need to, I know Diana is amazing and puts all of the links in the show notes, you guys. They're there. <laughs> They're there. They're there. All the social uh, links are at the bottom of the show notes. Absolutely. We make sure it's as easy to find as we can make it. Because sometimes technology is not your even, friend. Social links are even in the uh, YouTube description box as are well. Are they? Below the show notes. Wow. Yeah. Look at you go. Ah. You're so fancy. I'm the fanciest. I just video edit. So it's not that impressive, you guys. Now, if I was really fancy, I'd figure out why our RSS feed isn't working so the audio files aren't updating. We're like Guys, we're two sorry. episodes behind right now. I know it's broken. I don't know why it's broken. broken. I yeah. keep trying things and then I have to wait to see if the internet cache updates. So, uh, one of the one of our listeners got a hold of me because she won a prize. It's been sitting in the Ontario Distribution Centre for Canada Post for over two weeks. Don't uh, know why. 
I sent off an inquiry, but I sent it off Friday afternoon once I figured out where it was. Mm. And it's Sunday right now, guys. So like, I don't, I, I don't know. And I won't know to possibly later this week. It was put in the mail. Now it is absolutely out of my hands. <sighs> but given that the whole process for all of the prizing for last year's year of a sock along that we did has just been nothing but a hot mess. I'm not shocked at this point. <laughs> just like, that was cursed. The whole thing was cursed. I just, oh, I didn't do the appropriate sacrifices to raw or something. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. You didn't sacrifice enough chicken. There was not enough chicken sacrificing going on. <laughs> Thor is angry. Like I just, I just don't know, you guys. I don't know what I've done. But that has just been cursed from day one for me. I'm at the point where I'm like, when it's done and it's over, I'm never talking about it again. <laughs> it's like that. That shall not be named. Like I'm, nope, nope. Nope. Yeah. Just, just, no. Nope. And some of it was mine, and a lot of it wasn't me, and I'm just, I'm done. I will be so happy when I've got final word from back from everybody that they've got their stuff. I don't even know if it was all the packages got held up in Ontario or not. It's weird. I, I don't I just, understand how the postal system works. I have no idea. And I know they work hard, I just don't understand, so I get confused easily. I'm just like, okay, I know you're trying to explain it to me, and I'm sounding really dumb. <laughs> and I'm really trying to follow. I really am. I'm sorry. But why isn't this working? Ah, my sewing machine has also not arrived at the store it's supposed to arrive at yet. So I'm kind of, it's an estimated delivery of the 12th, which in my brain, I know that means it's not te technically going to be there. It hmm. could take longer. It could take it up is, to a week longer. It's estimated. It could take longer than that. It's just, they're hoping to get it to you by this point. Cool. That's fine. That's that's not not the end of the world. But you always want it to be on that estimated delivery date. <laughs> and you feel like if you check your email, it'll arrive earlier. It doesn't work that way. No. It does not work that way. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. So that's going on. So I don't know. Uh, for Asa, who is our winner from the... Oh, man. Uh, oh, it's the spring cotton one? Yes. The yeah. spring cotton garment make-along. Uh, I'm still waiting on my sewing machine, love. I literally have casing to sew for your project bag. And then I can put it in the mail for you because that's when my machine broke. I had done my side seams and then I started arguing with it again before I did the casings for the drawstring closure. Sitting in pieces in my sewing machine room, machine room, literally awaiting my sewing machine. Now, luckily I talked to Asa, 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 yeah, I gotta be closer. I'm still, I listen to Louise when she pronounces your name, I've gotta be getting closer. <laughs> I hope I'm getting closer. Bill awful. I'm just not even going to try. Uh, try. I'll just be, I'll just be over there. So they know that my sewing machine is broken, which helps. I'm hoping it's fixed before. Because if it's fixed before, because I we chat every Friday or Saturday at the Fiber Friends Knit-In on Facebook, I just be like, it's at the mail. <laughs> I mean, honestly, just a Facebook messenger. <laughs> it's at the mail. <laughs> oh my God. Just the worst. I still can't figure out why. I can't reply to Ravelry messages. It's so hit and miss. Like I hit reply and it looks like it's sent, but it hasn't sent. And it's not on their end. They've already checked. They've already checked free customer service. It's on my end. I have no idea. I don't, I don't know. Weird. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's just an interactivity problem because I'm using more of the accessibility software and if we're having a disconnect that way. So I'm literally at the point now where I'm going to uninstall everything, force update everything that's on the computer and then reinstall and see if that does it. <laughs> My last hope. I got nothing better. What? Try turning it off and on again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not hope for the best. Hope for the best. Sometimes that's all you can do. All right. So I think yeah that, and then the then we've got a couple events coming up farther out. We got the Manitoba Fiber Festival at the end of September, mm -hmm. and then in October I'm going to Knit City, and hopefully you will be able to join. We shall see. Surgery dependent. You got wisdom teeth, ma'am. Yep. Also moving to other provinces dependent. Possibly yes. Any word on that? No, not yet. Everybody's on vacation, so he hasn't heard back yet. I think that's fair. A lot of people take vacation in summer. Yeah. So that makes sense. Completely reasonable. Yeah, cool. All right. I suppose that's it then. All right. So I will uh, wrap it up and then we'll get ready for d, d Yeah. So I will say until next week, I'm Jocelyn. I'm Diana. And no matter where your week takes you, don't, don't forget, forget to knit. knit. Okay. I drink a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> we both drank a lot of water. <laughs>